Industrial gases such as oxygen can cause serious injury or death if not properly handled. You should only handle industrial gases or operate industrial gas equipment if you are a trained professional. Messer Americas makes no warranty or representation as to the suitability of the information provided in this program for any particular purpose. You, the viewer, rely on this information at your sole discretion and risk. The information provided in this program may not apply to all situations and is not intended to replace an industrial gases safety training program. You should always follow your employer's safety policies and procedures. This program instructs the viewer to call or contact Messer under certain circumstances. If you work with industrial gases and equipment that is not supplied by Messer, it is important that you contact your industrial gases supplier if you have an emergency or require support. Welcome to the Taking the Lead in Safety series from Messer Group, a world leader in industrial gases and engineering. In this program, we'll take a look at the safety guidelines for working with oxygen in both gaseous and liquid forms. We'll cover the basic properties and behavior of oxygen, how it's piped and stored for use. We'll examine the safety concerns associated with combustion and low temperature burns. We'll also pay special attention to the dangers of oxygen-enriched environments. Despite being used so widely for numerous applications, oxygen is probably the most frequently mishandled and misunderstood of all industrial gases. Many times, people who should know better refer to oxygen as air, and this is a very dangerous mistake. Ordinary materials in the presence of oxygen can react very violently and very suddenly. Therefore, we want to make sure that we use the proper materials in the design of our installations. Oxygen is not air, but it's a major component of the air needed to support life. Our bodies use oxygen to maintain virtually all biochemical processes at the cellular level. Without oxygen, we can survive only a few minutes. Because oxygen occurs naturally in the Earth's atmosphere, it's easy to take for granted. We tend to assume that it's always there when we need it, in just the right amount. But this assumption could have deadly implications, as too much oxygen is just as dangerous as too little. So here's what you need to know. As a gas, oxygen is odorless, tasteless, and colorless, so without special monitoring devices, there's no way to detect it. The vapor you sometimes see around cold oxygen systems is just water vapor condensing in the surrounding air. In its gaseous form at ambient temperature, oxygen is completely invisible. Oxygen accelerates corrosion. Most metals, wood, paper, and even many synthetics all break down from prolonged exposure. Oxygen causes rust on iron, a blackish film on silver, and a distinctive green corrosion on copper. Oxygen can be converted to a liquid if it's pressurized and subjected to very cold temperatures. This is how it's normally stored and transported. Why? Because liquid oxygen expands into a gas at a ratio of 860 to 1. This means you'd need 860 tankers of gaseous oxygen to deliver the same amount of material contained in one tanker of liquefied oxygen. Liquefied oxygen is extremely cold, 297 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. If you work with liquefied oxygen, you should always follow precautions to avoid low temperature burns. We'll talk more about this later. Oxygen itself is not flammable but it can accelerate the combustion of other materials at a frightening rate. In fact, some materials that normally wouldn't burn at all, like asphalt or steel, can burn vigorously if exposed to enough oxygen under the right circumstances. Liquefied oxygen is always stored in a vacuum jacketed tank. These tanks are like big thermos bottles, essentially a tank within a tank. They keep oxygen in its liquefied form by holding the necessary temperature of minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. The tank on a delivery truck is basically the same as the stationary tank, vacuum jacketed, holding liquefied oxygen under low pressure. 
There are several important factors to keep in mind concerning the storage tank and associated piping systems. There is one main liquid isolation valve located at the bottom of the tank. This valve can be used to isolate the supply of liquid from the tank to the vaporizer and stop the flow of oxygen in case of a leak or other emergency. You should always keep the area around the storage tank clear of material, cars and other vehicles. Backing in a liquefied gas delivery tanker takes a lot of room, so be sure and maintain a wide, clear path from the road to the tank. Only a trained industrial gases delivery person certified in the use of oxygen handling systems should perform unloading. If you work around a bulk oxygen system, you should always be aware of the condition of the storage tank. Any continuous discharge of liquid or excessive vapor from the tank or from a pipeline, valve, or safety relief valve is not normal and may indicate a problem, although some minor gas venting is normal. The same goes for a loud hissing sound or persistent vapor cloud. If you notice any of these signs, you should call Messer at the number posted on the tank. In an oxygen bulk handling system, the piping is just as important as the storage tank. Equipment and piping carrying oxygen must be protected. Always operate forklifts, trucks, and other heavy equipment at a safe distance. Piping systems like this call for extremely precise design work and very careful selection of materials. They should never be installed or modified without the supervision of a qualified engineer. Oxygen piping must be labeled indicating its contents according to the labeling standards specified for your site. Working with an oxygen handling system can create two potential dangers, extreme cold and fire. So your personal protective equipment should be chosen accordingly. On a day-to-day -day basis, protection from the extreme cold of liquid oxygen is the greater issue. Workers should wear long-sleeved shirt and pants of 100% cotton or FRC, fire retardant clothing. Eye and face protection. Safety-toed boots. And loose-fitting insulated gloves. Synthetic fabrics should be avoided because of the tendency to create sparks from static electricity and to melt when exposed to fire. While oxygen is not flammable, in high concentrations it can create unpredictable fire hazards. Avoiding unwanted sources of ignition like sparks from static electricity provides an extra margin of safety. It's very important that liquefied oxygen not be trapped in any container or section of pipe. Safety relief devices must be in place to vent gas when pressure builds up. Here's why. Imagine boiling water in a pot with the lid clamped on. What would happen? The water boils, the pressure builds up, and before long, you've got a very hazardous situation. If liquefied oxygen is trapped in a tank or pipe with no venting, it creates this same situation. Even though it's very cold, liquefied oxygen is actually boiling as it evaporates. This can build up tremendous pressure, enough to cause piping to rupture. Safety relief devices must be installed in all piping and storage systems, between all block valves and anywhere else that liquefied oxygen may become trapped. an oxygen handling system must be cleaned to very exacting industry specifications. Cleaning is a much more serious matter with oxygen than with other gases. If any hydrocarbons or the cleaning material itself remains in the system, it can become explosive when exposed to pure oxygen and provided with a source of ignition. Extreme care must be taken to ensure that no oils, greases, or other hydrocarbon-containing materials can come into contact with oxygen, liquid, or gas, and never modify an oxygen system without first consulting a qualified engineer. As stated earlier, liquefied oxygen is extremely cold at 297 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. It presents a tremendous risk for low temperature burns. Never touch a liquefied oxygen pipe, valve, or other system component with your bare hands. Your skin would stick instantly, even if your hands are dry, because the super low temperature will draw moisture right out of your skin. 
Even if you're wearing gloves, you should avoid contact with these components. There's also a danger from vapor produced by liquefied oxygen. It can damage delicate eye tissue. You should always wear eye protection anytime you may be exposed to cold vapor or liquid. If liquefied oxygen comes into direct contact with the skin, it can cause frostbite. Contact for more than a few seconds can be very painful. Even if you don't feel anything, you can recognize this type of injury by the waxy yellowish appearance of the frozen tissue. If you get a low temperature burn, don't rub the area and don't try to warm it with dry heat. Instead, run the affected area under lukewarm, never hot, water and remove any restrictive clothing. All affected employees should be trained on the safety data sheet for oxygen. Safety data sheets are available from Messer and they provide important safety information, including the hazards of the product, first aid and accidental release measures, personal protective equipment, as well as proper procedures for handling and storage. Up to now, we've been talking about safety concerns that involve the extreme low temperatures that are common to any cryogenic gas. And we have explained why it's important to keep all oxygen equipment free of oil and grease. But there is another safety issue that's unique to oxygen, the unpredictable danger of accelerated combustion in an oxygen-enriched atmosphere. There have been incidents where workers use gaseous oxygen to blow dust off their clothes before going on break. This impregnates the clothes with pure oxygen. If one of these individuals were to come into contact with an ignition source, such as a spark or a cigarette lighter, their clothes would flame up instantly. Oxygen vigorously accelerates combustion. Almost any material will burn in an oxygen-rich environment, and sometimes very violently, even objects or materials that would not normally be expected to burn. For this reason, only materials that are approved and specially cleaned for oxygen service must be allowed to come into contact with oxygen. So, let's review the properties of oxygen and important guidelines for safe handling. Air that is more than 23% oxygen is not air as we know it. This is an oxygen-enriched atmosphere and, as we've seen, this can be very dangerous. Oxygen itself is not flammable, but in high concentrations, it can accelerate combustion dangerously and unpredictably. For most industrial applications, oxygen is stored as a liquid under low pressure. The temperature of liquid oxygen is 297 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, and this creates a significant risk of low temperature burns. If you work with bulk oxygen systems, always wear the recommended personal protective equipment and follow all the recommended safety guidelines. A qualified engineer should oversee any changes to liquid and gaseous oxygen systems. Oxygen systems must be designed to operate within parameters that avoid the risk of fire. Anyone responsible for the maintenance of an oxygen handling system should be trained in the proper methods and procedures for cleaning, repairing, and maintaining the system. Pure oxygen in any form should only be used for its intended purpose. Remember, air is not oxygen, and oxygen is not air. Industrial gases, such as oxygen, play a critical role in manufacturing, food processing, healthcare, and literally thousands of other applications. Understanding their properties and their behaviors, as well as employing best practice handling procedures, ensures a safer workplace whenever they are present. For more information on industrial gases, such as oxygen, or to obtain safety data sheets for any industrial gas, visit our website at www.messer-us.com. Thanks for watching, and have a safe day.